Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and I'm really excited about, I feel like I'm really washed out from light. I'm going to have to see, and I know I look horrible, but I haven't quite gotten ready yet for uh, the live video at 4, which I know I should just probably do this then, and I probably will do this then, but... Uh, something just came in the mail, and I can't wait to, to at least look at them. Look. It, you know, this is very shiny. It's the Mary L. Tarot. Now, let me just say that this deck has been on my wish list forever. Not forever. Since I've had a wish list for tarot, this has been on my wish list. But I knew, having looked at the cards, I knew that they were, it's gonna, it was going to be a very, very powerful experience with them. And I just, I wasn't quite ready for it yet. And so when I was looking at getting the um, Deviant Moon, you know, some of those, to me those have kind of a, a disturbing shadowy feel to them. And I just couldn't quite get on board with it. I'm not ruling it out. I said I would try it. But I'm like, I'm not going to, you know, there's some disturbing shadowy cards in the Mary Al Tarot. And before I would go to the Deviant Moon, I can't do that before I would have the, sorry, Isabel's wired up because the postman just came. Um, I had to do the Mary Al first. So... I'm really excited about this. Um, you know, it comes with an absolutely gorgeous box. I'll turn around here. Uh, it comes with a beautiful box. This is by Schiffer Publishing, I believe. Yes, yeah, Schiffer Publishing. They do a wonderful, uh, wonderful um, packaging and sh on Schiffer. Now, this is originally $40, but I picked this up on uh, Amazon for... 22 or something along that line, so you know, right around the 20 mark. So, yeah, well worth it, I believe. But we will get into it further. It says on the back, exquisite and powerful. If there is a theme in the Marielle Tarot, it is one of the alchemy of the soul, of finding balance, symmetry, mastery of the self, and becoming your own genius. This long awaited 78 card deck is stunningly illustrated with traditional oil paints and a depth of symbolism found in the old classics. The accompanying guide, Landscapes of the Abyss, takes the reader through the meaning of each card via the landscape of the moon and the high priestess, through the geometry of the temple and of the tree of life, the Merkaba, and the Catechus. Uh, enter a doorway between heaven and earth, between microcosm and macrocosm, between the world of eternity and infinity, a rare gem suitable for all levels of tarot experience. Now, I also know that this has a great deal to do with mythology, if I understand correctly, which is one of the reasons that I'm very much attracted to this. I mean, just the idea of the abyss, you know, there's that quote, I'm going to misquote it, and I don't know who said it, but that idea of when you look, be careful looking into the abyss because... You know, what's going to look back at you. Basically, the abyss is going to look back. Um, and so that has been a huge impact on me for a very long time. Um, so I'm going to switch this down so you can actually see what I'm looking at. But I'm just... I'm excited about it, but I'm also anxious about it. It's kind of an interesting twist on it. So let's take a look. This is the Mary Altero by Marie White. Uh, from what I understand, she uh, painted a lot of these while she was pregnant. Uh, look at the box. Again, everything is very glossy. I know even the cards are. I have, I've, I've researched this deck pretty well. Um, so everything is quite glossy, but you can see you have a wonderful box with the guidebook. And then here are the cards, which are quite large and which will be being very promptly blacked on the edges. Uh, but I don't think trimmed down. Oh, I don't like that. Thankfully, that's not a regular card because look, that got all eaten up. Uh, but that looks to just be the title cards, but I don't like that. It's one of the problems of having really heavy laminated cards, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. I knew all these things when I purchased it and wanted them anyway, so, okay. Well, the box just disappeared, but that's okay. <laughs> so let's, oh, I don't like all this glare. Why is there glare going on? Hmm, okay. Uh, so these are quite large cards. Now I'm trying to find, I should have had a deck over here. You know, here is a playing card. 
Not that that tells you a whole lot. Here is a tarot deck, but this is the a little bit narrower than a normal playing card or tarot deck. Let me. Okay, here is a Llewellyn card, so you can see there's definitely a difference between that. Uh, here's the Bohemian Gothic, which is rather uh, large for a tarot deck, and it's larger even than that. Here is a typical like oracle card. This is. Um, uh, wild Wisdom of the Fairies. Uh, th that's wider, but it is the same height. So these are quite large cards, is my point that I was trying to get across, is that these are very large cards. Now, they do have, I'm going to just turn over, just so we can look at the cards for a minute. They are actually a nice thin factor. I'm, I thought they were going to be a lot thicker, um, and they're not. I really actually like the thinness factor. I'm not real big on thick cards, and these are not horribly thick. I mean, not, don't get me wrong, you can see this is quite a chunky deck, so these are not thin, but they're not horribly thick either. They are very glossy. This is something that I knew about these cards. Um, I don't like that much laminate because you can see if you look really close where some of that laminate might pull up on the edges, which is what happens with heavily laminated cards. So I wish that this was a nice, like, matte stock. Um, that would be my, you know, that would be certainly my wish. Now we can see it has a black border around it. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, and I don't know if it's on all the cards. Looks like it. This side is thinner than this side, so it's not evenly uh, placed on it. I'm just pointing out these kinds of things that people, you know, want to know when they're collectors and such. So, um, there we have it. I'm happy with the card side except for the laminate. Now, let's take a look at this gorgeous book. Uh, so, we have definitely, I mean, this was originally a $40 deck, and so that's, you know, that's not a cheap deck. Um, this is uh, dedicated to her children, and then we have all of this stuff. We have an introduction. Uh, Nietzsche is the one who said it. Thank you. Uh, Nietzsche said, battle not with monsters, lest you become a monster. And if you gaze for long into the abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. Thus he expresses the innate fear we have of the abyss, that even to brush against it, no matter how good our intentions, will be tainted by it. The abyss is most simply, but not only, introspection, looking within yourself. At first this sounds easy to do, but like the abyss, the calm surface is deceptive, and in truth it is a bottomless pit that contains many demons and monsters, but it also contains your own true will, everything you ever wanted to know, and your salvation, but you must be willing to dive or be foolish enough to stumble. And so I just think that's fantastic, and this is why... Um, I'm so excited about this. This is a, a book that I will be spending a good deal of time reading um, with. I will also be doing another video after I've read the deck uh, book very thoroughly as well as worked with the cards somewhat, but this is just going mostly about my first impressions of the cards themselves. Um, and so it goes into some history, um, the major and minor cards together, the structure. Uh, we've got some charts of the structure. It uh, looks like she's using page, knight, king, queen, and king, as well as wand, swords, cups, and discs. Uh, the major arcana looks to have been kept the same in terms of titles. Um, eight is justice and 11 is um, strength. So it's more along the line of the Thoth or the Toth system. Um, it says that the Mary Altero is built on the three pillars of the Marseille, Rider-Waite, and Thoth decks in deep respect of their wisdom tradition as well as this evolving iconography that has slowly come that has slowly come as many works of art do to reflect an inner truth that we humans carry inside of us. So she tried to put influences of all of them. I have read that this is uh, probably most closely uh, taken from the Thoth system. So, oh, 
Right there, she wins me because there's a quote from Joseph Campbell. People can say what they will about him. I He was a major influence on my developing my inner sense and lots of kinds of senses. So in the major arcana, you can see we have a large uh, grayscale representation of the card. We have the fool, the a quote. I'm assuming they all, nope, they don't all have a quote, okay? So a, this one has a quote, where you stumble, there lies your treasure. I mean, how wonderful is that? And then it goes into a description of the fool. And I really like to see that... It's not just giving a description, because this is important to me when it's a really meaty deck like this. Um, it gives you the description, um, but then it also talks about some of the details. Like, for example, the dragons are the twin serpents held by the Sumerian god Enki. They were the living rivers Enki poured forth into his pictures, the tigress and the Euphrates. Goes on, the butterflies are the symbols of transformation. When the fool stumps, stumbles, jumps, stumbles, is pushed or falls, he's making the first step on a very long journey. Um, so exactly, so it goes into some of the details that are in the cards and why they're placed there, and that is very important to me in a very symbolic, heavy deck. Um, then it has keywords, reverse keywords, a traditional divinatory meaning, and then a reverse traditional divinatory meaning. Um, so that's what you get. So that's two pages. Uh, now, here we have the Magician, and we have a little bit more, so it's not exactly uh, two pages. Um, uh, so that's kind of the tradition. Let's look at the, like, wands. Very similar, uh, but maybe a little bit less, but it looks the same. You have a nice big black and white image. You have the description. Um, you have keywords, traditional, and, you know, and then it goes on to the seven swords. And it goes right into it. So it's not, uh, they're not using kind of wasted white space, which I do appreciate. Um, so let me go back here. I don't want to give away, it's the, the images are great, so you can, I, I don't really want to see um, it's too much. Okay, so then in the back, we have Reading with Tarot, a daily reading spread. So it looks like a three-card spread, a relationship spread. I, quite, I like this format here, too. Um, a yes and no spread, a past life spread. That's interesting. I will definitely be trying that because uh, I do past life readings. A Tetrakis spread, cards one through four, the pyramids show. Oh, here, it's a pyramid spread. Interesting, I wonder what this, what you want, what you know, what you feel, what the reality is, your weakness, the heart, your strength, advice from your devil. I love that, advice from your angel, and final outcome. And then it kind of goes into interpretations and a conclusion, a bibliography, and some end notes. Um, and then we have about the author. Um, and these are all oil paintings uh, that she did. Um, now there I know, I, I will say, before we look at the cards, I will say flat out that there is nudity in this. I don't believe it's gratuitous. I believe it's powerfully used. Um, but there is nudity, uh, male and female. So if you have a problem with that, uh, you probably don't want to watch this video. There's one card in here that I know I'm not super fond of, but I know it probably means I need to set with that for a while. Uh, so yeah, so this, I have quite large hands, and so you can see, not I, I have long hands, and um, this is a big deck. So that's the book. I mean, it looks like I've heard it's a wonderful book. I've heard it's a book that you want to sit down and read um, a couple times. Um, you know, this is it's not something to set away with this deck. If you want to get the full impact of all the symbology in the deck, that you will want to have. Uh, you know, some knowledge of this deck. I mean, obviously you can read it completely intuitively, but I think then you're going to be missing uh, some of the point of this beautiful deck. So let me zoom in here. So here we have the cards. Um, I Again, I will be, like I did with the Fountain Terror, I will be doing more than one uh, video on this deck because I know that there's going to be a lot going on, a lot for me to work with, 
And so I know I'll be doing this uh, more than, I'll be addressing this deck more than once. But I, this is really my first impressions. I have seen many of the cards in this deck, um, but I have not seen, I don't believe I've seen every single card. Um, so here we have the Fool. Again, I love that we have the dragons here. We have the, the, we kind of talked about with the guidebook. We have the butterflies. He has butterflies on his shoes. He's got a butterfly mask on. He is completely nude. So we have that sense of, you know, just really stepping out and open and vulnerable. Um, a lot of energy to this uh, card, you know, just with energetic things flying about. Uh, we get almost the sense of, you know, with the fire and the water, uh, kind of a little bit of a temperance feel there, of kind of combining of the energies. Um, so, I mean, again, this is just me. I'm not really going to go too uh, deeply into all of this uh, yet. But this, I think, is one of my favorite magician cards. I think that this is just stunning. Um, and he does have like the traditional lemon scot above his head or the infinity sign. Uh, so we have that. And it talks about in the guidebook that just as he is a nothing, in the best possible way of nothing, uh, the magician is everything. He contains everything that he needs and everything flows from it. We have the waters here. We have the two trees um, creating a doorway between the spiritual and the physical world. Um, we have uh, the magician cloaked in earth, uh, and he's handing you a Metroton's cube or a phoenix egg. Goes into talk. I mean, there's so much. Another inspiration for this card was the old Norse god Odin, uh, because he was associated with Mercury in writing and would cloak himself in flesh and wander the earth. Uh, so we have that. He, could, he goes in to talk about Odin more. There's a lot of talking about the microchasms and macrochasms. Um, but this is about potential, genius, willpower, and communication. You know, I don't think all the time about communication with a magician, so I quite like that. Um, the magician holds a clear vision of what he wants in his mind until it exists on Earth. How amazing is that? So I just think this is a stunning magician card. It's one of my favorites. Um, I also actually like the High Priestess card. I don't like the Hierophants. I don't, it's not that I don't like it. I find it unsettling, and I'm not sure that I, it taps into the, I, I'm not sure about the energy of it, which I'm going to find out more of. But here is the High Priestess. She is all that has been and is and shall be. And it says, my robe no mortal has yet uncovered. And it, again, it goes into so much information. Uh, she's the counterpart of the magician. You know, she is, um, it talks, it talks about Lilith. It goes into the understanding of Lilith, who was made before Eve in the kind of biblical context. Um, and it says comparing her to the Empress is like comparing the Fool to the Magician. That's interesting. The Fool is nothing, zero, and the Magician is everything, one. Likewise, the High Priestess is the feminine nothing in the form of chaos, space, emptiness, void, the womb, so to speak, while the Empress is everything, life, bounty, abundance, you know, and, you know, having actually given birth. So that's interesting as well. Um... You know, again, there's so much information here. I cannot. We have a darkness within us, places that we can't easily see. It is our subconscious and our unconscious, places that are not illuminated by the sun. If consciousness was an ocean, waking consciousness would be a small island on the surface. Subconscious would be all of that below, and there is no end to it. It is a bottomless abyss. This is the abode of the high priestess. Oh. How wonderful. I mean, it just goes on and on. This is just amazing. I love this Empress card. Um, yeah, I just love this. And again, it goes on and on. I'm not going to go into great... I can't read every single one or we'll be here forever. Uh, I think it's gorgeous. I love it. I love this emperor. I think he's amazing. He has a very almost like Celtic 
druid kind of feel, although I'm not great with symbols, so this could be a different kind of symbol. I think there's actually uh, some Hebrew symbols on here and such, but I just get that sense of... Um, I don't know. It's fantastic, and I love it. This is the one that I find uh, uncomfortable uh, because we do get the sense of a Catholic church. Like, this is generally, we'll see sort of a pope or a popess or um, a you know priest of some sort. Um, and we do get that with a sense of that with the um, stained glass in the back and even with this almost looking like a nun's habit. Um, obviously we, we have the key we normally can see two keys in the Hierophant we have two supplicants so to speak but they are actually nursing off of her uh, gaining knowledge through the babies um, but they are but this is a really going into the idea of Babylon and um I, I'm not sure. The key to this card is a key that lies over her heart at the heart of the composition here. When turned, the key unlocks the gateway to the gods, which is, we do see that key in the traditional. Um, the traditional is called the Pope. The difference between that card and this one is gender. The Pope is feminine, indicating that the interpretation of the divine will come from within rather than without. Babylon has often been accused of being the Roman Catholic Church and depicted with all the trappings of a Pope. Uh, it goes in kind of the idea of the Whore of Babylon that you get. Um, it does... Um, give a lot of discussion about the baby, about sort of the yin and the yang twins, the eyes um, of um, the of Oedipus, as well as the right and left eyes of Odin. I mean, it goes into a lot of information. Now, I will say that what this reminds me of, other than kind of the clawed hands and the kind of alien-looking babies, which is what I find to be disturbing about this image, I don't mind any of the rest of it. it that's the part that kind of is like, oh, it just is kind of unsettling. But what it does make me think about is Julian of Norwich, who was a mystic who was was an anchoress, so she was walled into the side of the church um, to just have contemplation. And she wrote the Divine Revelations of Love, in which she talks about God, you know, during the time frame when God was very masculine. She talks about God the Father in um, very uh, feminine terms, nurturing terms, mothering terms. I think she even talks about uh, people kind of suckling at his um, the wound in his side and things like that. So I do get this feeling here of that motherness um, of sort of the um, traditional idea of spirituality that is was often missed but it wasn't you know you could find it in the mystics um even within the catholic church even within the you know uh christian based religions um at a time when it was very very um uh rigidly set um you could still find those mystics who were digging deep into the mystical aspects and this does for me tap into that so i know i'm going to be able to work with this card i just don't particularly like the alien babies i don't like cute babies in tarot cards let alone alien looking ones but <laughs> i'm so i will be working with this i actually had less of a negative reaction to it in person than i thought uh, because i did get that instant connection with julian of norwich this is stunning. Uh, this is the lover's card. Uh, you definitely get this beautiful um, divine love. And I think it was uh, Joey Morris who talked about how you have almost a very pagan uh, and then a very uh, um, sort of Abrahamic feel in the two energies that is is absolutely beautiful i just think it's gorgeous again i can't i love this card this was one of the ones that made me want to really have this this is the chariot um willing is not enough we must do says Goethe. oh she's one of my favorite poets i had a boyfriend a long 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 time ago who was german and he um used to read me Goethe 
uh, in German on tapes back when they had cassette tapes. <laughs> um, so I think this is a stunning card. It's just stunning because it reminds me of the strength, but then there is that the strength card, but there is that sense of being completely in tune and, and being able to move forward. It's just, ugh, yeah. Justice, very Egyptian, which is not surprising. We get the idea of Mott. Um, that's very traditional in tarot and not surprising whatsoever, and it's gorgeous. I love this hermit card, and people do point out it's a very watery hermit card, and I don't generally think about water. Uh, and he, there's wonderful quotes in here. It's a big quote from Victor Hugo. Um, this is just innocence and experience. What lies beneath the corporeal roads of the hermit? Man, beast, angel, animal, question, all of above, perhaps. Baphomet, perhaps. Um, yeah, it just solitude, alone, individual, experience, containing, concealing, hidden, and disguising. All of those in the upright version. It's just gorgeous. Just, And I love the wind coming out. Uh, yeah. I love it. This I love. I mean, this deck is just absolutely stunning, and it is even more stunning in person. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune, I don't know what else to say about it. It's gorgeous. And it's, the first thing that she writes is just two words on one line, Divine Chaos. Uh, gorgeous. And look at this. This is probably one of my favorite strength cards because you have that sort of um, meditative pose. Uh, she's kneeling down here. Um, we have the meditative pose with the prayer beads and that complete sense of going within. She has a couple different um, quotes. One says, I'm turning into myself. Uh, which is amazing. Why abstain from happiness when, like a skilled lion, your heart is nearing and will someday see the divine prey is always near. Havis. Um, the woman in the strength card is crafting her own soul, the lion, into gold. She is using her own hands to create her destiny. I mean, can we just... I, I mean, it's just amazing. Here we have the Hanged Man, stunning card. Um, the prophets accept all agony and trust it, for the water has never feared the fire. By Rumi, amazing. Hang in the balance and submit to your destiny. Just, it's gorgeous. This is another one why I had to have this deck. This, uh, you know, death card is one of my absolute favorite images, uh, cards, I should say, and this is stunning. And she asks right at the beginning, what would you die for? Uh, the death card is Tarot's Memento Mori, here to remind you that you are mortal, to live a good life and to live it to the fullest for one day you too will die. Then there's another quote. Death is not extinguishing the light. It is putting out the lamp because dawn has come. I mean, come on. Come on. That's, this one makes me cry. I knew that I would want this card or this deck just for this card. Uh, but in person, this deck, this card makes me want to cry. So here we have the gorgeous, gorgeous temperance card. And can we just, um, we're going to have to, because we have the water and the fire with this fiery coat. Uh, but can we just uh, read this because I love this poem. This is William Blake and I am a huge Blake fan. Tiger, tiger burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain? In what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp dare it deadly terrors clasp. When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger burning bright in the forest of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? <sighs> The tiger in the water, she says, is the king and the queen married in the tomb of death, time and eternity, creation and destruction. Ugh. She's just an amazing writer, period. 
Look at the Devil card. Absolutely stunning. It has a very geometrical. Um, she quotes Havas again. Uh, uh, this was a per must be a Persian a writer. Time is a factory where everyone slaves away, earning enough love to break their own chains. I mean, come on. The devil is lies, illusions, bondage, addiction, opposition, and personal demons. But it's also as humor in the face of opportunity opposition an opportunity to do what is right facing and defeating one's demons to the grand terratus atella the devil represented great force propelling propelling you towards a fate which would be either good or ill just i think it's a stunning card oh, i'm gonna have to take a break after the major arcana because this is everything that i thought it was gonna be here we have the tower, which is gorgeous. I mean, it says everything about the tower uh, without being... The tower and lightning are lovers, it says. Um, and it has a quote in what looks to be possibly German, Ramstein, onwards, onwards into destruction. In the devil, the serpent uh, Kundalini began to rise from the base of the spine. Uh, talking about the chakras here. The tower is the energy, power, and life force of God. Genesis-style life force to create or destroy. And look at this. Look at this. Quilfin, look at this star card. Perhaps they are not stars, but rather openings in heaven where the love of our lost ones pours through and shines down upon us to let us know they are happy. This is an Eskimo proverb. This is a messenger of hope. Now, the moon and the sun is gorgeous because look at these. Look at these. So we have sort of, you know, two spades. Now this is one reason that makes me wish to uh, trim it so that they could literally be butted up against each other. But look at those. Can we just sit there and look at those for a minute? The moon. Everyone is a moon and has a dark side which he never shows to anyone. The sun is God's metaphor for himself. <sighs> The quotes in here are amazing. I've already said I'm a huge quote freak, and uh, the ones that she is picking are just perfection. And look at judgment. Look at judgment. And more Blake. If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is infinite. Beneath the tree of knowledge of life and death in the garden of paradise, the first rose bush grew. And from the first rose, a bird was born, his plumage exultant, his song enchanting, and his flight powerful. So it talks about, this is talking about the phoenix. There's quite a lot of information about this, which is something that I really want to set with because, you know, Judgment was one of those cards I really worked to come to terms with. I um, mean, I have come to terms with it, but I, you know, I'm interested to see how much deeper she can take me. Um... Scales falling from your eyes, resurrection, rebirth, beyond division. Uh, yeah. I think the world card is stunning. Stunning, 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 stunning. I mean, look at this. The world is the landscape of the abyss in which the abyss in which the fool traverses. Together they are God and goddess, heaven and earth, womb and ray of light. She is the sky. He is the sun. They are many opposites and contrasts and none are exactly equal. This book, you know, just needs to be read, period. Um, and then we're going to go into the Minor Arcana, in which I will, of course, split them off to show. Uh, but let's just, you know, just please. I mean, these are stunning. I thought I was going to have a much harder time with this one, but because of that, you know, that shorthand, as soon as I saw it in person, I never thought this when I saw it uh, online, but as soon as I saw it in person, I thought of Julian of Norwich, and I need to go back and reread Revelations of Divine Love. It's a very small book, um, well worth reading just to see, you know, when you think about what time period she was in, um, walled up in a church building, having lost her entire family to the place 
plague, having lived. This wasn't a nun who had never experienced things. This was a woman who had experienced a full life, who had experienced loss on a level that is just you know, absolutely devastating. But she was still able to look at and, and was and was taught about a, a very all father male patriarchal God, and yet she saw the divine feminine in her God, in this particular religious God version of God. She still saw the divine feminine. She's just to me a very powerful person, and because this hit on me uh, with that, I, I you know that's like solved. I have no issue with that card anymore. I mean, these are just. Uh, absolutely stunning. It is is everything that I thought that it was going to be. I mean, look at that. That's just that's just amazing. It's an amazing uh, deck just from the Major Arcana. Uh, we will obviously continue, but I am going to go and take um, Isabel for a little walk uh, before I continue on because I need a little bit of a breath. <laughs>